Hello, today I wanted to give a quick look at this paper, Scaling Transformer to 1 Million Tokens and Beyond, with RMT by Idar Bulatov, Yuri Kuratov, and Mikhail S. Burtsev. This paper has a big promise, namely scaling transformer uh, inference to a humongous 1 million, even 2 million tokens. And in the first page plot right here, they have some tasks that they want the transformer to do. For example, there is a memorized task, there is a detect and memorize task, and there is even a reasoning task. And as you can see right here, we have input size in tokens, and they go up to 2 million. And you can pretty much see that the transformer holds up uh, performing these tasks across all of those token sizes. Now, there are a few a few caveats to this. Mostly the issue is a little bit in just in the marketing of the paper. The paper itself is actually pretty good and pretty okay. In fact, it's a follow up to an earlier paper on this RMT model right here. This, uh, we're gonna look at that briefly. But the paper is essentially a small extension to that other paper, namely that other paper did the same thing for autoregressive. So for causally masked decoder style transformers. And this one, the paper even says it's a, not a paper, it's a technical report, it simply applies the same thing to encoder transformers such as BERT. And it actually turns out that this variant right here is simpler. So conceptually, you'd actually read and do this paper right here first, and then do the decoder only paper because that you know, you have to handle the causal masking. We're going to dive into a little bit of this. But just to take expectations down a, a tiny bit, uh, this is not this is not the way to go and scale transformer to to ginormous inputs in the way that you think. Uh, this is very much we'll, we'll get we'll get into it. So there is a there is a diagram right here that shows about how this is going to be achieved. Namely, we're going to we're going to have text like blah, 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 really long sequence of text that doesn't fit into a transformer transformers suffer from quadratic scaling, their attention mechanism requires huge amounts of memory that scales quadratically with input length. So if you have a segment like this, and if you want your transformer to consume twice as much tokens, uh, then you need four times as much memory four times as many tokens, 16 times the amount of memory, you quickly run out of memory. So that's why this paper or this method considers chunking the text into like into chunks into sequences, or what they call segments, and then processing each segment with a transformer, and then somehow connecting these segments together over inference. This is obviously not the first time we are seeing something like this. Um, also, they themselves say so there have been previous attempts such as transformer XL and uh, various other things way way back in the day in like uh, 2020 2019 already uh, that did an approach like this newer approaches to extending the sequence length of transformers are for example, things like long former big bird and big bird and so on no big bird not big bird uh, that do consider the whole sequence but they do something like they say, okay, if we process this token right here, we only do local full attention, and then we're going to do some kind of a sparse attention to the segments that are sort of outside of our local segment, and then some special token attention to maybe like the very first token in the sequence, because that might be more important or something like this. So everyone's been sort of helping themselves with getting around this quadratic attention. Again, this paper considers chunking the text into multiple segments. So they process each segment with a transformer. And here, think of BERT, think of a task where you need to input an entire sequence and then classify that entire sequence. In fact, we can go look at the tasks they consider right now. The easiest is a memory memorize task. So the memorize task consists of text, right? There's text, 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 somewhere in the text, there is a fact, the fact might be something like this, Daniel went back to the hallway. Uh, and then at the very end of that sequence, there is a question. 
So all in between, they just fill in text. That's just noise. That's just there to confuse uh, the model. It's just random text. You grab something from Wikipedia, just insert it here. So at the very end, there is a question, where is Daniel? And the model is supposed to answer hallway, either by classification or by pointing into some vocabulary. There are various ways to implement that, but you, you can do it um, with a transformer like BERT. Okay, uh, this is in essence a sequence classification uh, task into like a preset vocabulary. So if this here was smaller than let's say 512 tokens, uh, then you could just feed it into BERT and have BERT train and answer the thing. However, if this is longer than the BERT context size, then you need to go to a few tricks. So the memorize tasks considers obviously, um, text that is longer than just one segment for the purposes of this paper. There's also the detect and memorize a task, which is slightly harder. So in the memorize task, you're guaranteed that the fact is always in the first segment. And uh, in the detect and memorize task, the fact could be anywhere. So you also have to detect where that fact is in any of these sequences that you need to remember. And then at the end, um, at the end, answer. By the way, remember here is is only technically done in this, you could also like a long form or something like this would not use memory, but they would simply have or rely on some sort of attention from the question to the place where the fact was written. But that's how a normal transformer would do it. Uh, this paper right here will write something into memory and then cons consider that memory in the last segment right here. Um, there is a reasoning task where it's even slightly more complicated. So there will be one fact, there will be another fact somewhere in the sequence. And you need to consider both facts in order to answer the question at the end. They do have examples right here. But I think the example is, is kind of wrong. Uh, so fact one would be the hallway is east of the bathroom. Fact two is the bedroom is west of the bathroom. And the question is what is the bathroom east of? And the answer is bedroom. But I think, like just looking at this, I only need fact two to answer that. I don't even need fact one. So maybe this is just kind of a wonky example that they've tried to give right here. I I don't see how fact one is relevant here. Um, but I trust that the actual data set, this two way relation uh, BABI task, actually has two way relationship uh, data points. Okay. Now that we know what we're dealing with, let's look at how this model does it. So what we need to do is, at least in, in this sense, as I said, we need to have a way to carry information over from one segment to the next segment to the next segment, and so on. And they implement that by forms of these memory tokens right here. So in a regular transformer, you simply input your text segment as tokens. So there's going to be token, 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 token. And you train that using causal, uh, no, no, sorry, in BERT, you train that using mask language modeling or something like this. What they do here is they add a series, a fixed amount of memory tokens. Let's say there are eight memory tokens right here. And the output obviously is going to be again, uh, the number, the number of tokens right here. Now, whether you train those or not, um, that's up to you. I think they start with a pre trained BERT. And um, they, they don't do the masked language modeling during training of this. So they only fine tune the task, but you still you still output those tokens. And you'd also output eight new or four, let's say four, four new memory tokens. So four memory tokens go in, four memory tokens uh, get out. Now these aren't the same tokens, but you just dedicate slots and say these are the memory tokens of the input, and these are the memory tokens of the output. And you take the memory tokens of the output and you feed them back into the input right here. And again, there is transformer layers and you feed there are output tokens and you take them. So this is how you can store information. Let's say there is an important fact right here in the text. Um, the transformer by means of attention mechanism transforming things across their layer could 
use that to store that fact somehow into these memory tokens. And then the next segment, let's say there is a question uh, right here that it needs to answer that this is the final segment, um, it could consult that memory uh, together with the questions so there there could be cross attention or sorry, well, that's technically self attention, there'd be self attention into that memory to retrieve the, the fact that was stored there. If this is not the last segment, it could also simply recognize that there is no fact right here. And it could just pass through the memory tokens to the output unmodified. Uh, so you have various where various ways right here. Notably, this is distinct from something like Transformer XL, what Transformer XL tried to do. And for that, I'm going to show you the previous paper right here, the recurrent memory transformer paper, which uh, was accepted at NeurIPS in 2022. And you'll immediately recognize things because it's as I said, this 1 million tokens paper is our technical report is just an extension of this paper right here. It's even the same diagram, they actually start with this and they say, Oh, no, we actually need to make it more complicated, uh, because we have these decoder only transformers. So we have to have like a read a portion of the memory and the write portion of the memory because attention can't go both ways. So if as we produce this segment right here, we need to consult the read, but then we need to write to the right, <laughs> like we need to produce the right tokens uh, that we can then pass into the read tokens of the next segment. Uh, so it, it gets more complicated. And after that, they go a step back for this technical report, the transformer XL, what it does is it simply it simply says, Hey, what we can do is we can simply take the of this transformer layer right here. So these are the different layers of the transformer, this would be one yellow block in the other diagram. Um, of this layer, we're simply going to take the last kind of hidden uh, state right here, like the last uh, attention, I guess, key or, or value query key and value, no key and value pair, maybe, we're, we're simply going to take these states right here. And we're going to have this segment do cross attention into this. So you can always do cross attention into the previous segment, um, attention, attention maps, I guess not maps, um, states, like, you can do cross attention into the previous segments states, um, like you would do cross attention in an encoder decoder way, but you simply say, well, I do it into the previous segment. So each segment here can technically look at uh, the intermediate states of the previous layer. And that's how you achieve sort of a, a temporal notion. But there is no there is a stop gradient, always because e e eventually you're going to run out of memory because if you back propagate, you need to consider um, you need to keep all of this in memory. And that's why they simply just stop grading They say you can attend, but the last segment has no chance of learning what to effectively store for the future. So memory has two components. One is I'm going to look back into the past that is trainable in transformer Excel, you train looking back into the past how you need to do that. The other component is obviously, what do I need to store? Can I learn to effectively store something? And that transformer Excel cannot do because there is no back propagation through time uh, to teach a previous layer what to store in its memory output uh, that the next layer can consider the recurrent memory transformer essentially solves that um, by doing back propagation through time. Now, I can simplify this a little bit by saying, maybe you're confused by you know, what is like the memory is here and here and there are these memory tokens and so on. Just consider this, let's say we have, um, let's, let's consider this uh, segment by segment text segment by sec text segment. So we have segment one, that's the input text segment. And let's say we have like a, a hidden state h zero, that's uh, m, like, let's call that m memory zero, we just initialize that to all zeros that goes in, there's a box, this is this could be anything like any box at all. And then there's going to be an output at this that this is optional, we only really need the output at the end. And also an output m one. So these two are outputs, um, we can 
have multiple output heads on a neural network, right? Or we can output one vector and then split it in the middle and consider the left-hand part the output and the right-hand part the new memory, right? The new memory will then go into the... It will go into this function. So segment two gets in here. There's output two and there is memory two and so on. Now the catches, the weight of this and this are obviously shared, right? This is always the same function. So in effect, uh, the way this looks is it's always the same box. And then there is the segment of the ith element and then the memory will always be fed back. So the memory of the ith segment will always be um, get back and the output of the ith segment. And there you have it. And we know what this is. We already uh, no, it's it's like it's 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 an RNN, like it's this is just a recurrent net, and they don't make a secret out of it. Like the the thing is called recurrent memory mechanism. All that is is an RNN where the part right here is a transformer. Like that that's it. Um, there is the, the way they arrange the memory and so on, and especially in the previous paper with the read and write and whatnot, all of that is a technical detail of how the transformer works. In essence, this is a recurrent neural network where the base building block is a transformer. So this is not scaling transformers to 1 million tokens or anything like this. This is an RNN that has a transformer as a building block. Um, I'm not trying to, to put this paper down, obviously, they are very clear what they're doing, right? Um, I just feel the community has seen the title and is going like, blah, 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 blah. Um, but yeah. So considering considering this, why is this a new, I, I, I highly doubt this is a new thing. Um, and it's maybe just written up differently. The, the reason something like Transformer XL hasn't done this, because in Transformer XL, I could just do backpropagation through time. What they do in this older paper is they do backprop through time. And now obviously they can't unroll for thousands and thousands of segments. You can't do that in an RNN either. So what you usually do is you backprop three steps or four steps because you need to keep all of this stuff in memory if you want to backprop um, through time. So you you simply don't. Um, also, it gets very noisy, which is evident in these older papers experiments right here. As they up the backprop through time, uh, you can see this right here. They compare to Transformer XL and look how Transformer XL uh, outperforms here on test perplexity. Um, as as you increase the visible context while training, so just how much context you see. And you get better as you up the backprop through time number of steps. But you can see that uh, as you go, this here actually gets better than Transformer XL. But then um, with more visible context, it kind of degrades. I don't know exactly how to interpret this, um, you know, really well, but I can guess maybe that's a property of uh, too, ma too much backprop through time is known to be unstable. And they have also combined Transformer XL here with backprop through time, and that turns out to work pretty great as well. The reason Transformer XL or things like this haven't done backprop through time is because they come from a time when a Transformer XL just fit into memory. Like it, it's like, okay, that's what we can do. We cannot do multiple of these. And now we can fit multiple of these into a memory multiple steps. And so we can do the backprop through time, which is linear in, in scale. Then obviously, once you have trained that, um, let's say you train it on uh, seven steps, which they do, that's the maximum they do right here, seven segments. Once you train it, then on inferencing it over thousands and thousands of segments is not a problem anymore. Because if you don't have to do backprop, as you go segment, next segment, next segment, next segment, you can forget all of the old, uh, all of the old memories and whatnot and hidden states, and you can go forever, essentially. So 
what's the the catch uh so they compare along with like ooh scaling opt you know if we if we go bigger how does it scale it scales quadratically and we only scale linearly it's of course it's it's distinctively not the same thing right it's an rnn it's not a transformer what it does is it brings the power of transformer like the language understanding um and combines that with an rnn so here you can see as you as you train on more segments for example let's say this detect uh, this one is a good example this memorization if you train on one segment boom as soon as you evaluate on two segments you go down uh it simply expects the it it solves the problem of answering the question using attention right and attention only works within the segment so it can't go to two segments because it doesn't even learn how to use the memories. If you train on two segments, you can see uh, you can you can go even to three and then you start degrading. So it learns a little bit how to use that memory. As you go up, you train with seven segments, which is I'm going to guess is the highest thing that, that fits into their GPU memory for training for backprop. Um, as you do that, uh, you can see then you have a pretty stable algorithm and all you did is you taught the algorithm of detect the fact, store it, and then consider, and then don't change the memory until you need to consider it, right? You've taught that algorithm. It's very different from being able to, you know, read an entire book and then uh, draw different, draw different things from that and ask questions about it like a transformer could if it really had the full context size. So this is going to be applicable to very distinctive tasks where you need to grab like single facts, a few single facts uh, that are dispersed in a very long text that you otherwise don't need, need to consider 99% of it. And you need to figure that out somehow from that text and then carry that over uh, to the end. Maybe, maybe two facts as you see right here. So the good thing of doing this is you can bring this power of the transformer to do the language understanding within one segment, right? You can make that really powerful, um, as for example, BERT and BERT derivatives are. And you can use that to detect the facts, right? They can be quite complicated as long as they fit into one segment. And then you can use the RNN part to sort of carry that over time. What you can't do is like, you know, have complex interdependencies and interrelations, and you need to consider many things that are dispersed throughout the text. I hope it's a bit clear what works and what doesn't work. They have nice investigations into how the model uses the memory. So if there is no fact in the input, uh, you simply see attention like diagonal attention, attention from the tokens to themselves. If there is a fact in the memory, then you see lots of attention to that, uh, to those memory tokens. So wherever that fact is, it will be stored into, into the memory. And then once you, um, once you see the question, or once the model sees the question, it's then going to consult the memory. So you're going to see a lot of attention um, on the on these memory tokens right here. Uh, so as it reads from the memory, again, it's, it's fairly cool for the types of things that uh, they these authors here investigate. And yeah, this plot over here, to scale to a million tokens, that it simply means it has learned that algorithm. And that algorithm, um, once being learned with like seven segments is now independent of the length, like it has robustly learned to ignore the noise. I'm fairly, fairly sure you could achieve that uh, with a bunch of other a bunch of other techniques. Um, but this is one of them. Uh, yeah, so that was it for shortly for for me. Um, Again, it is it is a cool paper, uh, and the paper itself and the technical report they're very clear what they're doing, but it's been a bit overhyped in terms of what it means. That was it. Let me know in the comment. Please overhype this video. Obviously, I'll see you. Bye bye.